It probably may not come as a surprise to people watching this video, but I've had to plan this video and this topic specifically very precisely because the guy we're talking about here in this video is still playing. Obviously, I don't want to make rumor videos about a guy who is going to play in a game the next few hours or whatever, but today in this video we're talking about another offer sheet. And we've made videos about a ton of offer sheet ideas over the past year and a half, pretty much. Going over to the previous offer sheet we had with Sebastian Ajo and the Montreal Canadiens, that kind of opened the floodgates. To even more discussions about more offer sheets for other guys, we spoke about St. Louis Blues defenders, and we spoke about Winnipeg Jets guys, etc. But in this video, we're over here talking about a potential offer sheet idea for a player on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Today we're talking about Anthony Sorelli, a guy who probably made a name for himself when he scored the series-winning overtime goal in Game 6 against the Islanders to send the Tampa Bay Lightning off against the Stanley Cup finalists Dallas Stars team, which they ended up losing against in Game Number 1. But the finals... The matchup, 4-1, that's not really all important here. What's important here is the idea of Anthony Sorelli and what exactly we're talking about here, which is indeed an offer sheet. We're taking a look at two teams over here. First off, it is the Winnipeg Jets. We are taking a look at this because there was an article published on WinnipegSun.com by Scott Billick talking about the idea of a Winnipeg Jets offer sheet for Sorelli. And then we're talking about the Canadians too, because why the heck not? I think anytime we mention offer sheet and a player in the same sentence, Habs fans in the comments are always going ballistic, saying, oh, what about the Habs? Do you think the Habs could do it? Lego, talk about the Habs in this offer sheet. Okay, so we're going to do that here. Not because there's any fuel to the fire, but because I know people are going to ask me to talk about that. So let's go over who exactly Anthony Sorelli is, what he means to the team, how exactly the Tampa Bay Lightning's cap situation is working out at the moment, and why this this could open the door for a potential offer sheet. Anthony Sorelli is a recently turned 23-year-old center, 6 feet tall, 192 pounds, playing for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He was drafted in 2015 in the third round out of the Oshawa General System. And yes, this was the McDavid draft. This was the year where the Oshawa Generals played the Erie Otters in the OHL Championship. Cole Castles shut down Connor McDavid, and I know that because I'm a Canucks fan who watched Cole Castles do his thing. But... Castles, while being the number one guy in Oshawa, was playing in front of an Anthony Sorelli who was the number two guy. And because he wasn't the mainstay attraction on that team, he wasn't really all too much of a highly touted prospect. It's why he went in the third round. But if there's anything to know about the Tampa Bay Lightning and their third round draft picks, for some reason, they seem to hit on them a lot. And this one was no different, because right away after being drafted, he was good enough to the point where he actually suited up in AHL games before going back and playing a third season in Oshawa as the team's captain. He got traded to the Erie Otters, he did some stuff over there, 31 points in 22 games played as a member of that squad as well. He was a point per game at the World Juniors, which was amazing to see, and then he made the Lightning next year. 11 points, 18 games played, he had a stint with the Syracuse Crunch. But from that point onwards, when they made the playoffs and they played him in the playoffs, 17 games played for the Lightning in 2018... He was a full-time NHLer, and he eventually made the team again, 39 points in 82 games last season. This season, he had 44 points in 68 games, and 6 points in 19 in the playoffs thus far. If you do the math on 44 divided by 68, multiply that out by 82, you have an average pace of about 53-ish points in a full season's worth of play. For a guy who recently turned 23 in the summer, that's really not bad. And the thing is, Sorelli has been so good that when Braden Point was knocked out of the lineup and he wasn't playing against the Islanders, Sorelli was the first-line center. He was playing with Kucherov and Palat, and he did not look out of place. Sorelli, a very, very solid, hard-working guy who is able to make space for himself offensively and defensively. He's just a very good all-around forward, and as a guy who is a center behind what would have been Stamkos and Braden Point, there's a reason to see value in this kind of profile. But the fact is, Sorelli now is an RFA, 
and the Tampa Bay Lightning have about $5.3 million in cap space to work with. And it's not even just Sorelli that they need to resign. They need to resign a few other guys. Carter Verhage, Eric Cernak, Mikhail Sergachev is the big one as well. So, because they need to make some moves, they'll probably trade a Yanni Gord or a Tyler Johnson or a Killorn or something to free up a little bit more money to get some dough to sign their guys. There is an idea of an offer sheet in place, and it's brought up here in this article on the Winnipeg Sun. We've mentioned it several times before in the past, but what exactly is the number one need for Winnipeg right now? Other than defense, it is a second-line center. Blake Wheeler? Sorry, man, that guy's not a center. He's a winger. He played center because he needed to. Mark Shifley is the one true center on that first line, but behind him, who you got? You got Adam Lowry, you got a few other guys, not really all too great players, aren't they? At least when it comes to second line center caliber players, which is why this article brings up the idea of Kevin Shoveldayov offer sheeting Anthony Sorelli. And the idea here, it's pretty self-explanatory. For the Jets, it's not like a second-line center kind of player is going to be just available on the trade block for easy pickings, so why not go the offer sheet route? Because if you take a look at what exactly that would cost, five years with an AAV between six-something million dollars and eight, it would cost them a first, a second, and a third. If they do between four million dollars to six in the same amount of time, it would be a first and a third, and the Jets have those draft picks. They would be able to do that. So if they really wanted to just put the Tampa Bay Lightning in a stranglehold, offer Sheet Sorelli for a big number that you can afford because the Jets do have a lot more cap space than the Lightning do. They have $15 million compared to Tampa's 4-5 something. And in return, the Lightning are getting draft picks, and that in itself is something that you could see value in because at the end of the day, if you wanted to acquire a good second line center, you probably would have been able to trade draft picks in general anyway. So, it makes sense from the Winnipeg Jets' point of view, because they do need a second-line center, and Anthony Sorelli could indeed be that guy. Would you rather be playing behind Point and Stamkos, getting limited ice time, or playing behind a Mark Shifley, maybe even with a Mark Shifley on a power play scenario? To me, there's a lot of value to understand why exactly something like this could be good, because anybody who is getting an offer sheet like this could be opening themselves up to a brand new opportunity. But if they win a Stanley Cup, the Tampa Bay Lightning, then I don't really know how likely it would be for somebody to part from those circumstances. Who knows, though? I'm not Anthony Sorelli myself. As for the Habs, because I know people are going to ask me about this for the Habs, the Habs could do it too. And I think anybody looking at the Habs situation, it's like, okay, yeah, there's a reason why we're talking about offer sheeting everybody if you're Montreal. Vince Dunn, Sergachev, even Anthony Mantha from the Red Wings. All this stuff makes sense, but... The positional need for Montreal? Nah, this absolutely does not work. Sorelli is a center, and if he gets offer sheeted, he will be offer sheeted on the base of him being a second line center. Montreal absolutely does not need another center. And it's kind of funny because, like, a year and a half ago, if I said that, you'd probably be laughing right now. But Deneau, KK, Suzuki, these guys are all great players. Not to mention Domi was your fourth line center. If he stays around, who knows? I really don't expect that to happen. But even if he does, then hey, that would be really, really good to have on your center core in a fourth line spot, even though he probably doesn't really deserve to be there. But Sorelli, if he's going from one center core to another, going from Tampa to Montreal doesn't really make the most sense because at the end of the day, he still might even be getting the same amount of deployment as he would have in Tampa. Now, I don't want to say that Stamkos and Braden Point are on the same caliber as a Kot Kanyemi and a Suzuki. Absolutely not. But the point is, no matter the talent level of your center core, the amount of assets you have is equally important. And that's kind of how the Montreal situation mirrors the Tampa Bay situation. So, to me, even though it would be possible, I really don't think that Montreal would actually be inclined to doing something like this. And the only reason we even included it here in this video is because I know Habs fans would ask me, because that's kind of what Habs fans do. They've got this pot of gold kind of cap space sitting under a rainbow that they've got, and they want to spend it. So, who knows? But at the end of the day, I do think it makes a lot more sense from the Winnipeg point of view, especially since the Tampa Bay Lightning could not offer him what Winnipeg could, assuming they don't move any pieces, but at the same time, we'll see what happens if the Lightning are able to move the pieces necessary to sign a Sergachev and a Sorelli, because they're both very good assets. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea, an Anthony Sorelli offer sheet. Montreal, Winnipeg, who gets it done, who doesn't, what is the dollar amount attached? I hope you enjoyed this video, and I and...
Bye.